So I've been seeing a lot of articles about ChatGPT and how it's going to ruin cybersecurity or revolutionize hacking or any number of other things related to that. And I've been looking into a lot of these claims and I think they're a little bit overblown. Now let's take the claim that ChatGPT can write malware. Can it write malware? Sort of. It's a little bit more complex than people think it is. So I'm going to try and dive into what ChatGPT can do and what it can't. Now you see a lot of articles where they're demonstrating ChatGPT writing malware and then they're like, well, look, uh, someone who doesn't know how to code could take this. They could use ChatGPT to write their malware and then they could run with it. But I think what's happening here is a little bit of reverse Dunning-Kruger. Uh, but essentially these people are cybersecurity experts or at least professionals in the field and they don't understand how little someone who doesn't know how to write malware knows about malware like i can go on chat gpt right now and i can say hey uh, write me some c code that injects into this process hooks these functions uploads the data to this uh, server over this protocol and sure it it might do that. And I say might because I've actually tried to do this with ChatGPT and it didn't go very well. Now, just for fun, I decided to put on my old malware developer hat and dive into making some ChatGPT malware. So first up, I asked it to write some position independent code to inject into uh, the Explorer process. Now the code it wrote used the mini hook hooking engine, but it made no mention of that. Now, since that library is not a Windows default library, and it made no uh, effort to import it, the code simply just won't work because it's calling functions that do not exist. Uh, but I didn't really want to mess with that, so I decided to actually work on the injection code. So I first off asked it to write some code to inject shellcode into a process, and it made me this code. Now this code uh, loads the shellcode into its own process and attempts to run it from the heap. Uh, but the heap is non-executable, so this code is not going to work. It's also going to load the shellcode into my process instead of the process I want. So I said, okay, the, this isn't going to work because the heap is non-executable. So it rewrote it using memory map file, which sort of would work. But the problem here is this code is for Linux. So I said, hey, can you rewrite it as Windows? And it, surprisingly, it did a good job. Like it translated this code to the Windows equivalent pretty much one to one. But the problem is this code is still trying to load the shellcode into its own process. So I said, hey, can we, can we maybe inject this into another process called explorer.exe? So it rewrote the code uh, essentially using the same function to load it into another process. But the problem is in order to do that, you need the CE debug privilege, which it didn't assign. So I said, hey, uh, you need to sign the CE debug privilege in order to load code into a remote process. And it went, yep, sure, here's some code to do that. And I just gave me the code to assign the CD by privilege token. So I then said, hey, can you combine this code with the original code so that it'll actually work? And it did do that, sort of. It basically added the CD bug privilege code after the injection code, which means it requests the privilege to do the injection after already trying to do the injection, so it's not gonna work, it's just gonna explode. Um, I basically just gave up and I was like, I could have written this myself faster than I'm ever gonna get to some actually functioning code with ChatGPT. But like, imagine I wasn't a professional malware developer and I didn't know all of these things, or I've just gotten five different code snippets that either don't do what I asked or just completely don't compile or explode on execution. Like in order to get to a state where this code actually works, I need to be a very uh, proficient programmer. And if I wasn't, I would have just tried to compile the first piece of code. It would have exploded and then I'd be very, very confused. Now, someone who doesn't know how to code, well, they're not going to know what code injection is. They're not going to know why it's useful, what processes they should inject into, what they should hook. They're not going to know the questions to ask. And I think that's the part that people miss is being an expert is as much knowing what questions to ask as being able to do the thing. Like there are tons of theoretical physicists who have never done an experiment in their life, but that doesn't mean they're not experts. They know the right questions to ask how all of these different components fit together and how to work around them. Whereas someone who doesn't understand malware isn't going to know how to code it. And they're certainly not going to know how to design it. 
So I think it's a little bit of a case of you got these people who do understand malware and they're showing that ChatGPT can be used to write malware. But the thing is, that is only if you already understand what you're doing. I'm sure we could just go and find some random person who maybe they're interested in hacking. They know a little bit about malware, but they don't really know how to design it. And we can sit them in front of ChatGPT and I would be confident that they would never get a working piece of malware out of it. And then kind of on top of that, anything ChatGPT could do, that means the good guys can do it too. So if someone did get ChatGPT to write a full malware operation for them, then one of the blue teamers can come over, ask ChatGPT those same questions, and then get everything they need to block. So it's really just, even if ChatGPT did increase capabilities, which I don't think it does personally, it increases capabilities for both the bad guys and the good guys. So it's not really any net different. But I think what the big misunderstanding here is people are thinking ChatGPT is an all-knowing AI because they can ask it any question and it usually gets the right answer. But so does Google. And we don't think Google knows these things. Like we just know that when we type this query into Google, it knows how to match that query with a specific web page but it doesn't know what the content of that web page means. It is just blindly referring things because it put this question with this answer. Like it's it's essentially combining questions and answers, which is what ChatGPT does. ChatGPT understands the relationship between words, which means not only can it find the right answer for your question, but it can reword it in its own words. And that's basically how I see ChatGPT. It's less an all-knowing AI, and it's more just something that's like Google, but capable of rewording things. Like for instance, if we ask it, who is Marcus Hutchins? And it says, he's also known as Malware Tech, which if you look at my wiki page, the first line of my wiki page, it has all of these key facts. It has that I stopped WannaCry in 2017, that I'm also known as Malware Tech, and that I'm a British security researcher. And it looks like it has really just grabbed that first paragraph off of my wiki page and then just reworded it. And I don't think it actually understands any of those things. It understands the relationships between the words. So if I ask it follow-up questions, it can basically tell me what word is related to my follow-up question and then make an answer as if it understood the actual question I gave it. But really, I see it more as just rewording things. And that's what it does with code. Like if you try to write malware with it, you'll notice a lot of these codes are like very rudimentary snippets that you might find on Stack Overflow. And that's because it doesn't understand code. It is treating code like language. It understands the relationship between snippets of code. So it could get an example from XYZ site and combine it with uh, an example from ZYX site but it doesn't fully understand what the code does. And with malware, a lot of the example code is just very rudimentary, not very useful stuff. So uh, like if you look at a lot of the actual, the examples where people are like, I got ChatGPT to write malware, it's Python code. And the reason behind that is there are the most snippets of Python. And uh, so it's just basically just taking Python snippets and then doing malware stuff with that but python doesn't run on computers like you need the python interpreter to be installed if you're writing malware you would want it to be in a native language and when you start trying to translate python to native languages chat gpt just it just loses it it really doesn't know what it's doing there and that's the hard part about writing malware like anyone can write code but actually understanding the techniques and the technologies and like why it does what it does that is the hard part and then on top of that, there's the actual operation. I could give someone uh, a fully working malware sample, uh, some macro documents to spread it, uh, a C2 server and say, hey, go, go, uh, go ahead and run your own malware operation. And they would fail. Like there's a lot that goes into running a malware op from like the crypting to the cycling out the C2 IPs and C2 domains as they get suspended or detected by the firewalls. And this is all stuff that only people who are very familiar with malware are going to know. And if you're super familiar with malware, but you can't code, well, you can just hire a coder from Fiverr and explain what you want them to do. It's not hard. 
So ChatGPT doesn't really fill in any gaps that weren't already filled in. It may be if you were very, very experienced in running malware operations and designing malware, but for some reason you couldn't code at all and you didn't have money to just pay a coder $5 from the internet, then maybe it would help you. But that's a very, very small segment of the population. And I just really don't think it's going to cause the big security impact that people think. I think the real risk of ChatGPT is it is a language model. It understands language. So it might be good at automating phishing. Like typically with more advanced phishing, you've got to convince them to work with you. It's not just a one-time thing of here's a phishing page, enter your username and password. You've got to kind of coerce them into working with you, approving 2FA prompts, uh, maybe installing something on their machine. And ChatGPT could just take the human out of it. You could have like a, a script that seems like it's a human because ChatGPT does have a very good understanding of language and you could have it replace the human aspect. It's not replacing the knowledge, it's just replacing the language part. So we don't need to actually manually call the victim. We could have uh, the AI do it for us. But outside of that, I really don't think it's going to be writing undetectable malware it's not going to be hacking people. It's not going to be doing anything that's even remotely impressive. Anyway, so those are my thoughts on ChatGPT. I really do think uh, its threat to cybersecurity or really to anything is overhyped. But if you disagree, like let me know in the comments and I'll maybe do a follow-up video.